Hi, welcome to Team Book Taster. My name's Josie. I'm a librarian here at the City of West Torrens. I'm coming to you live from Hammer Centre Library. Thanks for joining me today. The Team Book Taster gives you a taste of some new or recent teen literature so that you can see some different authors and styles and hopefully pick up something that you like or recommend something to someone in your life who likes teen fiction. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got today. I've chosen three books. Of course, they're all Australian um, and they're all really big prize winners. They have strong female protagonists. I'm gonna start with Take Three Girls. This is co-authored by three amazing Australian um, Oz YA authors and um, they are Kath Crowley, Simone Howell and Fiona Wood. This one is brought to us by Pan McMillan. So thank you Pan McMillan for letting me review it online today. That's the book cover. So these amazing authors have brought to these characters to life Addie. Kate and Clem and um, this has won a number of different uh, nominations including um, the Children's Book Council of uh, Australia's, um, it was a notable book um, and then, sorry, not notable, it actually won the uh, 2018 um, award for Book of the Year. So it was notable, then shortlisted and won. So I had a lot of people in the library come in and read this book at the time and got, they gave me reviews and they said it was really fantastic. So I really recommend this one. I was just trying to find you a little bit, um, just lost my page there, to read you from the book. So talking about those three different personalities, so there's conversations about friendship and the issues that they're going through. They've been, um, they're in a private school and so there's discussions about high school life, private school life, um, things that go along with being in high school like um, friendship groups, shaming of different kind of people like fat shaming or um, um, homophobia and also misogyny. So there's quite a few issues that are explored through this. Um, feminism is brought up and there's all that conversation about identity and belonging and how do you fit in in, in your own way. There's this terrible um, thing going on in the school where there's a toxic website talking and gossiping about things um, and lots of kids in the school are affected by it. And so there's this question of how to overcome this horrible toxic bullying that's going on um, and the school has come up with a solution but um, that's explored through the book and you don't really know where it's going so it's a great little journey and the website's called PSST so this bit is from uh, Clem's um, writing it talks a bit about the school things about St Hilda's it runs on fat checks and fake smiles it's like those ladies you see in the muddy suburbs the ones who look perfect until they get up close and see how much work they, they've had done. This school has been around for a century. It's old, but remodeled. So it has plenty of sharp edges and shiny surfaces. Iris and I have always gone to public schools. At our last one, if anyone had a problem with you, they'd be up front and pop you at the bus stop. Here, everyone's angst turns up on PSST. That's that website. It's not just St. Hilden's. It's people from Sacred Heart and St. Joseph's, Basildon. Pretty much any private school within a 10 kilometre radius. Parents want, to, parents want to know ATAR scores, but PSST will tell you who puts out, who's hot, who's not. A whole host of things I don't need to know. Last week there was a post about shagging odds for the formal. It's always the cool girls who get named. It doesn't seem to hurt their swagger. I'm starting to feel a bit panicked about the formal. I haven't got a dress yet or a date. I'm working up to asking Stu, but maybe he'll think it's just kid stuff. Jinx isn't taking a date. She's part of the feminist collective and they're all going together as a group. 
She said she might not even dress up. Why should I? Who are we even dressing up for? After dinner, I head over to Iris's for our designated mum and dad Scott. I have to remind myself about the things I'm supposed to say, the things they want to hear. What they won't want to hear is that every morning this week, I failed to make it to training. I tell Jinx, I'll be there by seven, but I never make it. So that's a little insight into the book. And I hope that uh, you got a taste for that one and maybe you like, might like to put on um, a hold for Take Three Girls. Very um, prolific award nominations. And as I said earlier, it's a CBCA winner for the book of the year. Um, I think it was 2018. But lots of um, great reviews in-house. I've heard lots of customers who borrowed it really enjoyed it. So that's why I've chosen Take Three Girls. And you know, really interesting, strong, strong characters in that one. Okay, my next one today is um, When the Ground is Hard. This is um, a fantastic book by um, Marla Nunn. You can see that one there. And it's brought to us by Alan Unwin, so thank you to them for my review online today. Now, I, this is so authentic, I think, because um, the author is actually from Swaziland, where um, we have uh, a setting for this book. And she herself has been through a boarding private school situation. So again, it's a, a private school and it's all about that high school life. And, um, but in a really different context because we're not in an Australian context. So we get to see um, life outside of Australia. And it's also a historical book because it's set um, a quite, I think it's 50s or something like that from memory read it a little while ago now and it's um, a fantastic portrayal of the character Adele who is really um, adjusting to her new life. She's been in the in crowd and she's suddenly been um, dumped by her best friend and she's been assigned Lottie um, to be her new roommate for the year. So together they have to overcome their, um, their social status issues and it's a really interesting um, background context for this book in that there's all this interracial class systems going on with this book. So um, the discrimination within race is discussed and um, very interesting context. A very readable book and I highly recommend this one. I really enjoyed it. Um, so some of the things that are talked about in this book are the issues of classism and bullying. There's some you know, discussions about bullying and keeping pets. So they're the kids who try to make, be really in with the in crowd so that they can be liked and protected, but obviously treated really badly. Um, and again, it's that finding your identity and appreciating who you are as your own self, which is such an important issue and um, explained in such a fantastic way in this book. Really enjoyed that. So a little dip in. So this is where um, Adele just first gets dumped. It's really interesting. So she's jumped on the bus, expecting to sit with her best friend, and then this happens. I've been dropped for a rich girl with a silver necklace and a bag of peppermint chews in her impargo box. I blush with shame at being left standing in the aisle, and I turn away to hide my face. I hurry past the first nine rows of students whose sometimes fathers and always their fathers have paid their school fees in advance. They wear neat, freshly ironed clothes. Their suitcases are packed with their new school uniforms and new school shoes with fresh laces. They have clean faces and nails. They are top shelf and the lump in my throat makes it hard to swallow. It's not fair. I'm one of them. My sometimes father is a white engineer. My fees are paid in full and my skin smells of ponds, ice cold cream and lavender soap. It doesn't matter. The first class seats are gone. No one offers to move to the back. Why would they? Giving up their prime position would be the same as admitting they're inferior. 
I move into second class. Here, students with sometimes fathers and always here fathers wear a mix of hand-me-downs and new clothing of varying quality and age. Their school fees are paid in instalments and whenever money becomes available. They are the middle shelf and right now I've given up the best food in my impargo box to take a seat amongst them. Claire Naidu, a half Indian girl with long black hair that is the envy of every student with kink or hard to curl comb curl, shrugs to say, I'm sorry, I feel bad for you, but I'm keeping my place. Other students stare at their hands, their feet, their knees, anywhere but at me. They are embarrassed for me, mortified at my public dumping and free falling status. I reach the third class seats where the bottom shelf, where the bottom shelf students sit with jutting elbows and sprawling limbs. Between them, they have a mix of always their fathers, sometimes fathers and many fathers who pay the school fees whenever and, and however they can. A pocket full of spare change, a wagon load of chopped wood for the school, cooking fires, jars of homemade jam for the kitchen and loaves of cornbread steamed in corn leaves for the teacher's morning tea. Third class children have no money. If they have jobs, the jobs don't pay well enough to afford the school fees. Oh dear. So there it is, she gets renegated because her best friend chooses someone with a better status than her. So there's lots of that um, conversation through that book. And really, really fascinating, I like that one. Um, when the Ground is Hard by Amala Nunn. And the last one today is Amelia Westlake. Now, there are two covers of this book which has caused me confusion because this one is Amelia Westlake and this one is Amelia Westlake was never here and it is the same book. Um, this one is again a multiple award winning book and it's by Erin Go. So that's that one there and brought to us by Hardy Grant Edmund and thank you for allowing me to do a little review today. So this is one I read quite a while ago now but I really loved it. It's one of those books that stayed with me. It's a light um, rom-com I suppose because there's uh, some interesting love dynamics going on here. So we've got um, Harriet Price who has a gorgeous girlfriend. So there's a female-female relationship. It's not explored in any detail. Um, and then there's Will Everett and she is like the, you know, the not girl not to be hanging around with. But they form an unlikely um, partnership and they decide to work towards some of the social injustice they see in their school. So very interesting. There's a bit of a feminist slant in here and overcoming the bad guys, which binds them together and brings these two unlikely characters in sync and they develop a relationship while they're building this hoax character, Amelia Westlake. So it's a bit of a fun, a different story. I really enjoyed that creative angle to it and uh, very readable. You could plough through this one in no time. So that's for dessert today. So the unlikely friendship, it's again exploring high school life, um, female relationships, elitism, misogyny and some social justice stuff, but in a fun and light-hearted way. Um, I was going to read you a little bit from this one. Uh, this is where they, uh, Will and um, Harriet, they get uh, bumped into detention together and that's how they come together. You know what astounds me most? How this school managed to brainwash allegedly smart people. They say Harriet Price is topping the year in math. How can she understand quadric equations, but not the simple fact that Rosemead is a crackpot institution that entrenches blind obedience. 
not, ev not even Miss Bracken expects me to stick around. I won't tell if you don't, I say. Harriet looks pained. Of course she'll tell. Not telling would, <laughs> would conflict with her screwed up moral universe. I think again about the scene by the pool this morning and anger burns my throat. Uh, there's a the bit of a dodgy uh, PE teacher at, in, the, in the pool in the morning. He's got a bit of a, a, a favouritism thing going on for the good looking girls. Anyway, I try to calm myself. What should I expect? Harriet Price is a lemming who does everything by the book. All she cares about is a, a discipline of Rosemead and clogging up her resume with useless committee memberships. Oh, she probably has a private school boyfriend and a 10 year plan involving the usual marriage, mortgage, kids trifecta as well. Oh, why would she risk a blot on a perfect school record for me? More trouble is the last thing I need. The four o'clock and four o'clock is only half an hour away, so I resign myself to 30 more minutes of Harriet's company. At least I can get some drawing done. Before Harriet and Bracken show up, I was doodling ideas for my major work. The project will be make up about 50% of my final year art mark. I'm massively behind. Everyone else has started their pieces, but I keep changing my mind. I considered doing something about world um, poverty or global warming, but Mrs. De Gennaro says that the best type of art does two things at once. It speaks to current events and tells a story about the artist. And that's why my latest idea is to explore the dangers of air travel. Every time I turn on the news these days, I hear about another crash in which hundreds of people have died. It's been four years since I flew on a plane and after what happened last time, I vowed I'd never fly on another one. I take up my pen. So there you go, a little bit into the world of Will. So this one goes through Will's side of the story and Harriet's side of the story. And um, yeah, bad girl, good girl, hook up and um, create this crazy hoax. So I really like this one, it's a bit of fun and covers uh, some great issues in a fun, light-hearted way. So today we've had Amelia Westlake was never here, or just Amelia Westlake, it's got two titles. And when the ground is hard, and take three girls. Too many pieces of paper everywhere. So if you like any of those, don't forget you can place them on hold using the public library system. I suggest you jump on and download the Libraries SA app. It's free and it's a great gateway for you to grab all of your books online. And um, if you've got any questions, come in and see us. We love to recommend books to you. And the library is open at normal opening hours now. So we'd love to see you in the library again. Okay, guys, see you later.